Okay, so we've been looking at uh, minimal polynomials. Okay, and we saw this uh, interesting little property that if you have uh, an element of so a finite field with p power m, l p power m elements. Okay, so we had a formula for the minimal polynomial. Basically, the product over say gamma n uh, c beta x minus gamma. And what is uh, c beta? So basically, the set of conjugates of beta, and that is the beta beta power p beta power p squared. So I'm, uh, it will say finally it has to end somewhere, right? So it probably ends up p power d. And then you should have the beta power, uh, maybe maybe d minus one. Okay, so you should have the beta power p power d equals p. Okay, so it should be the smallest. Uh, okay, so this is the set of conjugates of beta, and uh, so you'll see. Uh, so so this is a powerful formula. Okay, so it gives you an explicit formula for the minimal polynomial in terms of the in terms of the elements of the finite field, if you have beta, you have all you have to do is just keep exponentiating it with p. You get all the conjugates, and then take a polynomial with those conjugates as roots. It is the minimal polynomial. So, in particular, this k will belong to zpx. Okay, which is not a very obvious. Uh, maybe these two fans can be turned off. Maybe that will help. I'm not really benefiting from those fans. So, have to think about. It. So, so this is a kind of a non-trivial statement, and uh, that's something which is uh, which is useful for us. Okay, so 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 let's look at this uh, set of conjugates and see see what we can. Maybe we should have the fans on. Maybe this. One. Is it on? It's off. Okay. All right. Okay, so, so so the first thing, first question you might want to ask is, if you have an element beta and f p power m, how many conjugates will it have? Okay, so the answer lies in this little equation here. So what does this imply? This implies beta power p power d minus one equals one. Okay, so this is this is something that has to happen. Okay, for any element. Okay. Uh, so, so for what kind of d can this happen is the question. That is one point. The other thing is, you know that f p power m also has a primitive element. Okay. So, so beta, if it is an arbitrary element of f p power m, it can be written as the primitive element power something. Okay. So, those two together somehow tie down these conjugates very nicely for us and we will look at that a little bit more in detail. Okay. So, it is it's interesting to list out all the conjugates quickly, list out all the minimal polynomials quickly and that is something that we will do. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's do that next. Okay, so so if you start with f p power m being zero one alpha square zero one to alpha power p power one minus two. Okay, so alpha is a simple element. Okay, any beta is going to be some some alpha power i, right? So we'll ask the question. What are the conjugates if you look at the question what are the conjugates of beta? Okay, so it's gonna be alpha power i, then what? Alpha power i times p, then what? Alpha power i times p squared, so not to some alpha power i times p power. Yeah, in our notation, we've been doing d minus one, right? Right? It will be this way. And what is the property? The final property that we have is alpha power i p power d equals alpha power i. Okay. So this becomes basically the same as alpha power i times p power d minus one equals one. Okay. Right? And this should be. I mean, d should be the smallest. Uh, integer for which this can happen. Okay, so there's also something uh, something like that which needs to be true. Okay, so 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 if this has to happen, then what do we know? P 
p power m minus 1 has to divide i times p power d minus 1, right? So, that has to happen, right? If you have alpha power some element being some power being equal to 1, then the order of alpha which is actually p power m minus 1 has to divide i times p power d minus 1. So, this will give you this will give you some uh, some control over it. So, in fact, it also turns out that d will have to divide m. Okay, so that seems like a slightly uh, counterintuitive kind of answer here. So, this is also another way in which you can view this. So, that from here you can slowly conclude that d has to divide m. Okay. So, think about how you might want to prove it. I am going to skip that here for now. So, this has to happen. Anyway, this is not a very trivial fact. Think about it for a while. Okay, yes. No, 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 this is i here, no? so it won't happen. So, d will have to divide it. I'm sorry? You have beta power p power d minus 1 plus 1. Yeah. And uh, beta power p power m minus 1 is also 1 plus beta belongs to p power m. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, you can prove it in various ways. But anyway, so this has to happen. There is this various other ways. So, this, this equation also is important to remember, okay? So, you should see that d is the smallest integer for which p power m minus 1 divides i times p power d minus 1. This is what will help you in the computation. Okay, but another way to look at it, if you if you go through all our results and think about it carefully, you can show that this can happen only if d divides n. Okay, so that's another result uh, that you can look at. Anyway, so that's it's not too too critical for us. So this this is a useful fact also. So the number of conjugates of any element of a field will be what? It's controlled by m. Okay, so depending on m, only the divisors of m can occur as the number of conjugates. Okay, so that's an important fact to remember. Okay, so you can prove this. All right. So let's let's take a few examples and see how these conjugates work out, and then I'll tell you some general facts. Okay, so let's take some very simple examples. Uh, the simplest example is f eight. Okay, so here we have zero one alpha alpha square all the way to alpha plus six. Okay, and alpha plus seven is one. It turns out the other equation is not so relevant. So maybe you have to take alpha plus three three one plus. Okay, so let's try to look at c c zero. Okay, what are the conjugates of zero? Okay, just one. Okay, zero. So you raise zero to any any power, you just keep getting zero. Okay, so what are the conjugates of one? It's just one. Okay, what are the conjugates of alpha? Okay, so here you have to do some work. You can have alpha, and what is p in this case? Two, right? So I've got eight elements. So p is two. So I will do alpha square and then alpha plus 4 and then that's it. Alpha power 8 is the same as alpha. So you stop that. Okay. And uh, C so, so now the next conjugates you must think maybe I have to write down C alpha square. So what will happen if you write the conjugates of C alpha square? You will get the same thing as C alpha. Okay, so that's that's something that's uh, that's nice about these things. So in fact, all these three are the same. Okay, so once you have a set of conjugates, they are all conjugates of each other. You can't go, those are repeatedly raising to the power p, okay, and then you are doing, then you are doing the same thing. So, it has to work out that way, all right. So, the next thing, next element to look at is c alpha power 3, and that would have alpha power 3, alpha power 6, and then alpha power 12. What is alpha power 12? It's alpha power 5, okay, and then this is the same as. So that's it. All right. So now, if you want to find minimal polynomials, okay, to each set of conjugates, you can associate a minimal polynomial, right? So the conjugate, so C zero to C zero, you associate with polynomial x for C one, x plus one. What about for this guy? Okay, you have to do the computation, and if you assume alpha bar three is one plus alpha, you're going to get x bar three plus x plus one. All kinds of crazy stuff is happening here. You are going to get x power 3 plus x plus 1. Okay. What will you get for c alpha power 3? Okay. So, now you can use all the sum total of the previous results that we used. You know, it is going to be a minimal irreducible polynomial of degree 3. There are only two of them. One of them we already have. The other one has to appear as the minimal polynomial corresponding to the other element. So, that, that will be x power 3 plus x power plus 1. Okay. So, now instead of this rule, if I had said alpha power 3 is 1 plus alpha square, what would have happened? 
C alpha will correspond to x power 3 plus x squared plus 1 and then the other one C alpha power 3 will correspond to x power 3 plus x plus 1. So anyway both fields are isomorphic we know that it is not a big deal but then just the structure and the form will slightly differ in terms of the isomorphism. Okay, so you will have to think of the other thing. Okay? So, so, so what people do, see, see if you look at the list of conjugates here, this alpha is just really ha, carries no information, you know it is a primitive element, all the information is only in the powers, okay. So when people write conjugates, they will usually drop the alpha, okay. So when they write conjugates, this element is kind of irrelevant, okay, we do not really care about what it is the conjugate of, because the power there is complicated, right, how do you write alpha power something as 0, right? you have to say minus infinity and all that, it is just not very nice, so that is usually dropped, nobody cares about the conjugates of 0, for 1 you write alpha power 0, okay, so instead of 1 you write alpha power 0, okay, so it is very common to write the conjugates as follows, you write the conjugates of 1 as 0, the conjugates of C alpha, okay, in fact, uh, so, 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 okay, so, so let me write, so 1, 1, 1, C, 1, 2, 4, and then for alpha power 3, you write 3, 5, 6, okay, so just drop the alpha, okay, and in fact, even this 1, right, is basically alpha power 0, even this alpha is not really carrying any information on the C alpha, C alpha power 0, so instead of this, people usually write C 0, and then this would be C1 and this would be C3, okay. So these are all notations and uh, some conflict as such, right, so from one notation to other, where the C1 here is very different from the C1 here, okay. So remember that uh, confusion in notation, so instead of alpha power 1, you are simply dropping the alpha and saying C1, okay. So this is very, very common and it is done all the time, okay. So let us look at another example of F16. Uh, go 1 alpha alpha star all the way to alpha star 14. I know alpha star 15 is 1 and then let us say alpha star 4 or something star. Okay, so let us just say that. If you do that, then what will be uh, C0? C0 is always going to be 0, there is no problem. Okay, remember C0, C alpha star 0 which is actually the conjugates of 1 which is just 1 itself which is alpha star 0. Okay, so we write it like that. What about C1? Okay. So instead of thinking of this 1 as actually being C alpha and raising alpha to the power uh, 2 and all that, I can simply take this 1 and multiply that 1 by 2 and take modulo 15, okay. which is the same as taking alpha power that and raising it to the power 2 and then reducing it modulo 15. Okay. Simply take the 1 and multiply by 2. Okay. So I have 1, then I multiply 1 by 2, I get 2. How do I get rid of this bottom thing? Any ideas? Is there like a view, page dot, beautiful, okay, so, so 1, 2 and then you multiply 2 by 2 again, you get 4, you multiply 4 by 2 again, what do you get, 8, okay, and then you multiply 8 by 2 again, you get 16, that model of 15, it goes back to 1, okay, so the way to read this is basically this is C alpha, conjugates of alpha, alpha power 1 and these are alpha power 1, alpha power 2, this is alpha power 4, this is alpha power 8, okay. And then the next one goes off to alpha again which is the same. So, so you write this in this way, okay. The next thing to look at is C3, C3 would be 3, 6, 12, 9, 18, but 18 is the same as 3, okay, modulo 15, okay. So you basically think of this as multiplication by 2 modulo 15, okay, okay, alright, so you multiply by 2, do modulo 15, okay, so then what is left, 4 is done, 5 is left, right, so see 5, 5, then multiply by 2, you get 10, multiply by 2, you get 20, which is back to 5 again, okay, and then you do C7, I will write it down, you can check it, yeah, it will not come in this order, but it will be this, okay. So after 7 you will have 14, after 14 you will have 13, after 13 you will have 11, after 11 you will have 7 again, so you stop, okay. So such sets have a name and they are called cyclotomic cosets, okay, so that is the name for it. If you, if you think of them just in terms of numbers, these are called cyclotomic cosets 
under multiplication by 2 modulo 15. Okay. So that is the that is the way to talk of these sets. Okay. So there are how many sets? There are 5 such sets. They partition the entire set 0 to 14. Okay. What do I mean by partition? The, the union of all these things makes the set 0 to 14. No two of these sets will have anything in, anything in common. So the cyclotomic process under multiplication by 2 modulo 15 partition the set 0 to 14. Okay. Right. So this is what happens. So there is a very general version of this. Okay. So before that, let's just think of this set once again. Okay. So what about minimal polynomials? C0 is minimal polynomial for 1, which is just x plus 1. Okay. What about C1? Minimal polynomial for alpha, alpha square, alpha power 4, and alpha power 8. The minimal polynomial corresponding to C1 would be x power 4 plus x plus 1. Right. So let's do that. This would be x power 4 plus x plus 1. Okay. What about 5, 10? x square plus x plus 1. Right? It has to be. It has to be an irreducible polynomial of degree 2. Right? There is nothing you can do. It has to be x square plus x plus 1. Okay? See, remember the number of elements in the cyclotomic process tells you something about the degree of the minimal polynomial. Okay? And you know the degree will divide m, the degree of there also will divide. Okay, so, there are various ways of showing D divides M, the way I wrote it down. Okay. So, so, what about 7, 11, 13, 14? Okay, so, useful trick to remember for small cases is, if you have x power 4 plus x plus 1 as the minimal polynomial, there is a reflection, right? What is the reflection? x power 4 plus x power 3 plus 1. What will be its roots? It will be 1 by the roots of these things. So, what is 1 by 1? It's clear, it has to be 14, right? See, alpha is 1 by alpha, or alpha power minus 1 modulo 15 it becomes alpha part 14 okay so the inverse of this will be this guy so these two have a relationship they will give you mirror image polynomials as uh, the minimal polynomials okay so you know immediately that this will correspond to x bar 4 plus x bar 3 plus 1 okay what about the c3 yeah so the only mini missing minimal polynomial of degree 4 which is this one and notice here what is its reflection is itself okay so you won't get anything new okay so everything will work out very nicely in a very proper way i mean of course we knew it has to work out like this There's nothing nothing else can happen right so that's to be this okay all right so so let me once again reiterate this definition of cyclotomic process okay so the idea is you take the set 0 1 so let me say this here you have to say under multiplication by some prime p modulo p power m minus 1. Okay, so that's that always goes along with cyclotomic process. The parameters of a cyclotomic process are p and m, p is a prime, and then modulo p power m minus 1. Okay, so the idea is you take any element i from the set, the cyclotomic process of i is basically i i p i p i p squared so on but eventually it has to stop somewhere right so to stop somewhere let's say i p power t minus 1 when i p power d equal by modulo uh, d is smaller such that such that what i p power d equals i modulo p power minus 1 okay so it has a lot of properties this d will be such that d divides m all those things you can show Okay, so it's not very hard uh, to show these things. Right? So an interesting thing is the CIs are also related to conjugates. Right? CI is basically set of conjugates of alpha par i. Okay, so you can show this being conjugate is what's called an equivalence relation. Okay, so so that, that also will come very easily. So two two elements belonging to the same cyclotomic process will will be something called an equivalence relation. So what's nice about an equivalence relation is you can show it has to partition your original space. If you have a set and if you define an equivalence relation on it, then you will also get a partition of the original set. Okay, So, this is something I am not going to prove, but I will state this as a fact. Okay, So, it is easy to see by construction, but this in theory also it is true. So, what is this fact? The cyclotomic process from a partition of partition uh, the set 0, 1, 2, 
okay so this is the this is a fact which comes through this equivalence relation stuff it's, it's not very hard to show okay so what do you mean by partitioning if you take union over i ci what will you get okay so let me we'll call this set as s you'll get yes okay so that's very probably very easy to show it's not very hard if the elements is long there and then what is the other thing ci intersect cj is what okay it's null set whenever i is not equal to two. oh no 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 okay so so let me let me write it this way so this is dangerous it's either null set or okay if ci is not equal to c what is the best uh, what is the best way of putting okay so you either have ci equal cj for i and j or ci intersect cj is a null set okay you can't have anything in between you cannot have ci and cj overlapping partially that's what this statement is supposed to include. okay i don't write it carefully so let me write it carefully okay so i j either c a equals c j or or what c a intersect c j is the null set okay one of these two things is true okay so of course if you reduce the number of i's to form a proper partition then i can make the statement but anyway so we will we'll, uh, come to that so they form a partition and then uh, you either have ca equals cj or ca into 6 cj is an answer it's clear right okay so this is in general terms. so let's do maybe a couple of more examples and then uh, let me just try to find this point it's, it's, it's quite important to see that okay so so few more facts i think i, I didn't state it if alpha if alpha is a primitive element okay so, so let me just also write a few more things Few more facts about this primitive elements and all that. Okay, so so let's let's just get get rid of these other facts. Okay. If you have alpha belonging to f theta and being primitive, okay, for so what i is alpha per i also primitive? Okay, so that's an important question. Okay, so it's good to know that. Okay, so if you have alpha being primitive. Alpha per i for i equals zero to p per m minus two generates the entire non-zero sets. That's fine. For what i will you have alpha per i also being primitive? So the question basically is to figure out order of alpha per i. Okay, so what's the formula for it? What is the formula? It's you can show very easily that this will be equal to i comma. Is that correct? Does that make sense? Okay. Right, so i and p per m minus one will have some common factor. So, say for instance, if it has some common factor, then you have to divide p per m minus one by the common factor to get the order of alpha per i. Okay, so this is a, this is a fact which is in general true. If alpha, so in fact, instead of p per m minus one, you can replace with order of alpha. Okay, so this guy also you can replace with order of alpha. Okay, so this is a general fact. If, if, if alpha has order some m, and you raise alpha to the power i. The order of alpha per i is going to be that order divided by the GCD of these two things. Okay, so G C to C, I mean if you think about it for a while, you'll see it has to be this way. You can prove this, it's not hard to prove. If you show this will divide that, that will divide this, and you will get the answer. Okay, so it's not very hard. Okay, to prove this, you have to show the LHS will divide the RHS and RHS will also divide the LHS. Okay, so once you show that it's done, that's the way to prove it. But it's a fact that is easy to see. Okay, the smallest power that will take alpha per i to one is what? p power m minus 1 right so you need p power m minus 1 power and then if you already have i what is common between i and p power m minus 1 you can divide it right so whatever is not common you have to have that I mean, otherwise it will not work out. so that's the it's kind of intuitive in a way but you can prove it rigorously if you like okay so that's the idea so given this fact how do you answer the question when is alpha power i also primitive gcd of i and p power m minus 1 has to be 1 which means it has to be relatively prime with p power m minus Okay. So this is true whenever. Okay, so this is true. Alpha per i is primitive if and only if. But i and p per m minus one are relatively prime, or C C D of i comma p per m minus one equals one. Okay, so this is the this is a fact which is good to remember. Okay, so you go back to this example. 
would ask for this example here. So what i will also for i be primitive? Okay, so so everything in C one, right? What else? C seven. Okay, so it seems to be going in in according to cyclotomic cosets, right? According to conjugate. So if an element is primitive, its conjugate also will be primitive, right? So because when well, how do you get from one element to its conjugate? You take this i and multiply by p. P and p power m minus one can have no common factor, right? It's it's not possible for p and p power m minus one to have common factor. So clearly, if i and GCD of i and p power m minus one is one, then i p comma p power m minus one will also be one. Okay, so it will go on and on like that. Okay, so so primitive elements occur as conjugates. If one element is primitive, all its conjugates are also primitive. Okay, so that's another nice fact to remember. Okay, all conjugates. Uh, so so this implies conjugates of alpha bar i are also primitive. Okay, so if alpha bar i is primitive, then the cyclotomic coset of i will have exactly how many elements? Okay, if alpha bar i is primitive, C i, the cyclotomic coset of i, has to have how many elements? It has to have m elements, right? So that is for that. Right? So that also is another thing that is implied. Okay, so if alpha bar i is primitive. Okay, this is only in one direction. Okay, remember that C i has equal to m. The other direction is not true. Okay, you can try to write it down and try to actually prove it rigorously. You will see the other way. You can never show. In fact, there is a counter example. What is the counter example? It's right here, right? It's right here. The C three in F sixteen is a counter example. Okay, alpha bar three is clearly not primitive. Okay, order is five, right? G C D of three and fifteen. So you can divide that by. So you, have, you immediately get the order of five, <coughs> but then it has four elements. Okay, so the opposite is not. Okay, so that is uh, that is something to remember. Okay. So so another thing that will be true is alpha conjugates of alpha pi are primitive. Another another fact which you can quickly show alpha pi is primitive. So finally, both alpha pi minus pi is also primitive. So that's another thing. Right? Does that make sense? Alpha bar i is primitive minus i. It should have the same order. You can use the same formula as you did before. It has to have the same order. You can show that alpha and alpha bar minus i. So you can also use the polynomial approach if you like. Okay. So alpha bar minus i, the root minimal polynomial will be the mirror image of the minimal polynomial of alpha bar i, and that is primitive. That gives you a primitive element. This also should be a primitive element. Cannot be anything. So those are various ways of doing it. Uh, so oh, I think that's. That should be all the facts we need about uh, this stuff here. Okay. So, so let's take one complicated-looking example. Okay, and uh, we'll try to figure it out. I mean, it's, 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 it turns out finally that the example is quite easy. When when it starts out, it seems it might might seem like a scary example. Too. So let's look at F one twenty eight. Okay. So let's try to form cyclotomic cosets. Okay. So we can try to do that. It's not a big deal. C zero, C C zero is going to be simply zero. There's nothing much to do. That what will be C one? One two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four. Right? Okay. So let's try to find C two. What will be C two? Yeah, C two is not so interesting. C three. <laughs> three six twelve forty four forty eight. Ninety-six. I mean, what do you do? Just to one ninety-two, or subtract one twenty-eight. We're going to get sixty. Sixty-five, right? So one twenty-seven. Remember, multiplication by two, modulo one twenty-seven. Okay. So what is sixty-five? That takes you back to three. Okay. So you can do this. Keep on doing. But I'm going to make an argument here. Okay. So what kind of a number is one twenty-seven? No, oh, what kind of number is seven? I'm sorry. <laughs> See, you know, this is two plus seven, right? Seven is a prime number. 
okay so which means what every ci should have size either one or seven it can't have anything else okay so you already have the one guy which is one you can't have more than one guy which has the same size one why so there's only one irreducible polynomial of degree one okay so you can't have the same guy repeating okay so what should happen everything else should have size exactly equal to seven okay which means what if i ask you what is the degree of the minimal polynomial of alpha par i of x what is your answer well if i is zero then it is one if i is not zero it is seven so seven is if i is not zero okay so, so that's a that's an interesting observation okay the other observation is i think 127 is also prime okay so what happens if 127 is prime so go back to the formula for alpha par i okay so when is alpha par i what is the order of alpha par i it's p par m minus 1 127 divided by gcd of i comma 127 what will be gcd of i comma 127 It will always be 1 okay so every element in f128 is primitive except for 0 and 1 okay so that's another thing which is nice about this kind this kind of fields so f128 that way even though it looks a bit scary it's very very easy okay so it's not too hard to think of uh, what will happen in f128 okay so 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 this kind of a question is important for us okay so you will see that in code construction this shows up a lot okay often times we may not care about the exact minimal polynomial it might be needed in some steps but it may not be too crucial but what you will care about is the degree of the minimal polynomial you might want to know that ahead of time for whatever reason so to find the degree of the polynomial do you really need to know the structure of the finite field that's the question that's important do you need to know the structure of the finite field no what do you need is only the cyclic dynamic cosy construction and that is simply multiplication by 2 modulo 127 okay, so you only need arithmetic which is very simple and you can find degree of the minimal polynomial that way. okay so an interesting exercise is to repeat the same thing for us 256 okay so this is a field which shows up often in practice can you guess why why what's so nice about f256 eight bits right so every element can be represented with eight bits what is so nice about eight bits in this case you program you cannot think beyond eight, eight bits being one byte and that's why it's so easy right so people you know illustrious vlsi group they they can only think in terms of bytes uh, limited that way. so so since they like that they like f126 f256 a lot so you see a lot of codes will be codes over f256 that are used in practice so, so they have their own limitations they like they like to limit them Okay, so let's stop here for today, and uh, we'll pick up from here. So okay, so this will be kind of the last lecture for your quiz. Your okay, quiz will come uh, next Tuesday, and from Wednesday onwards, we'll be doing problems uh, on these. Things.